Hello and welcome and many thanks to those of you that have responded to my first two videos. And I would like to say thank you to those who have invited me to debate. If it's a live debate, if it can be here in London, I'd be very happy to attend a live debate about this Olympic mega mosque. Uh, otherwise, if you live further afield, then maybe we can have our debate on YouTube. And I just want to say I'd be very happy to accept videos that are relevant to this debate uh, and relevant to questions and issues relating to this big mosque. Today we're going to look at uh, a new issue, and that is Tablighi Jamaat and their association with a relationship to violence, to jihad, to security issues, to terrorism and so on. You see, Tablighi Jamaat say quite clearly and quite publicly that they do not participate, they do not believe in, they do not preach violence. They say they're very pacific, they're very pietistic, and they don't get involved in violence whatsoever. That's not their bag, that's not their scene, that's what they say. But we have a question for them, a number of questions, and it has to be acknowledged various things. Firstly, we have to acknowledge the fact that a number of British suicide bombers, terrorists, active, uh, activists in, in that sense, a number of them have been associated with Tablighi Jamaat. Richard Reed, shoe bomber, he'd been through Tablighi Jamaat. Two of the four seven, London 77 bombers, including the leader, Mohammed Siddiqui Khan, he himself had been associated with Tablighi Jamaat. And then most dramatically of all, a number of those who were arrested in connection with the August 2006 airline terror plot were active and known Tablighi Jamaat supporters and worshipped at Tablighi Jamaat mosques. So we have some evidence already that people associated with Tablighi Jamaat have themselves been involved in or perpetrated acts of violence. Tablighi Jamaat answer that. They say, hold on, hold on, they say. Uh, and they use this example. They say a lot of people involved in tax, tax dodging uh, go through Oxford University. Do you blame Oxford University for that? No, you don't. Why blame Tablighi Jamaat? Because a misguided few people um, get involved in acts of terrorism, suicide bombers and so on. Suicide bombing. True. But I want to put before you some evidence that actually questions this and questions this quite severely. Firstly, let me just read from a couple of academics, people who have studied Tablighi Jamaat quite carefully. The first one is a guy called Marc Gaborio. Okay, he's a Paris-based academic, and he studied them. And he said that Tablighi Jamaat's ultimate objective is nothing short of a planned conquest of the world in the spirit of jihad. That's Marc Gaborio. Then there's a guy, a Muslim guy, called Jitinda Sikhand. He's based in Delhi, in, uh, in, in, in India. And he's written about Tablighi Jamaat and politics. And he quotes a supporter and a sympathizer saying that Tablighi Jamaat is silently preparing Muslims all over the world for lesser jihad or physical warfare against the enemies of Islam. That's what they're saying. That's what these academics are saying. And I think it's very valid to listen to what they're saying. You see, the distinctive thing about Tablighi Jamaat, unlike many other Muslims, is they quite try deliberately and carefully to emulate the life of Muhammad. They like to follow him exactly and literally. For instance, if you're a committed Tablighi Jamaat supporter, you will sleep on the floor and not on a bed. Why? Because Muhammad slept on the floor and not on a bed. You'll brush your teeth with a twig. Why? Because Muhammad brushed his teeth with a twig. He didn't have a toothbrush in those days. There's nothing wrong with that. People can sleep on the floor, people can brush their teeth or whatever they like. I don't have any problem with that at all, except it illustrates how Tablighi Jamaat so exactly and carefully emulate Muhammad, unlike, I say, many other Muslims. Now, they therefore have to look at Muhammad himself. And we see that Muhammad, when it comes to violence, when it comes to jihad, when it comes to uh, warfare, he himself personally was involved in 29 battle campaigns, many wars. He believed in it as a way both defensively and offensively to stand up for Islam and to stand up for Allah. He also sent his Muslim troops out from Medina uh, in many other uh, battle campaigns too. Now, if Muhammad did that, and if Tablighi Jamaat follows so carefully and exactly the life of Muhammad, how can they say they don't believe and do not accept and do not preach jihad? and physical violence? I think we can validly ask them this question. Is it a matter of principle or pragmatics? 
are you for pragmatic reasons in the West for the time being not propagating Islam through violence? Or as a matter of principle, have you renounced the life of Muhammad and the example of Muhammad? I think we'll find it's just pragmatic. And when the time comes, they'd be willing to take up arms, if necessary, to promote their own particular beliefs and their own particular uh, aspect of religion. As I say, this isn't all Muslims, but this is Tablighi Jamaat. And I think they have a very strong case against them, which they need to answer before they try to attempt to build this last large mosque right beside the Olympic Stadium.